Yeah. Yeah. Sir. Yes, sir. Hey, Amen. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have yet another SOT special video for you guys. We got the top 30 strongest One Piece characters alive. Not everybody. Ooh. So you're not going to see Roger on the list. You're not going to see Whitebeard. This is current yes, One this Piece. This is the current top 30. Like, uh, I'm not going to lie. We say it all the time. And now is a great time to say it. What a time to be an anime fan. But also, if you are a One Piece fan, then what a time to be a subscriber of this channel. As he said, we got the top 30 strongest One Piece characters. And I'm not going to lie. If you're in the One Piece community, then you already know it's that time of the year. So it's a great time for us to give you our top 30. And let us know in the comments what you think, vice versa, what your top 30 is looking like. If you thought that far, you know what I'm saying? Other than that, you know what I'm saying? At least give us like a top five or a top yeah. three, you know what I'm saying? What's that What's that upper echelon looking like? Hell yeah, hell yeah. But shit, just to jump into it, at 30, I got Hancock. At 29, I got Kobe. At 28, I got Dolphy. And at 27, I got Sanji. I'm not going to lie, like... Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie. They all showed out. I think this is really the second commander tier. Like, I feel like Sanji's the king of second commanders. Starting with 30, I mean, we all know and saw what Hancock did. But at the end of the day, I don't really know how much to really scale her. It's just safe to assume she has all three hockey. Yeah. I think... She doesn't have advanced conquerors hockey though. So she does have advanced armament and I think advanced observations of coin toss. But I just had to put her at thirty. I couldn't really put her any higher because there's a lot of niggas in one piece. The fact that she's in the top thirty I think says a lot. As far as Colby goes, if you know, you know that nigga, whoo, mama, there goes that man. But I fuck with it. I had to put him at 29. I'm not going to glaze him and put him that much higher because first commander is a real room. We say it all the time. First commander is the real top tier. But, yeah, I got Kobe at 29. 28, I got Dofi, the heavenly demon himself, all three hockeys. And I feel like he was the king of second commander until Sanji came in, and now Sanji's the king. Okay. Mm. See. Ooh. Okay. So my number thirty, I put Queen. Just because I don't I don't know much about what Kobe's doing now. I'm not I'm not caught up in the manga and shit. So I didn't include yeah. that shit. But Okay. I put Queen at thirty. I put Dofi at or I put Jean Bay twenty nine, Dofi twenty eight, really? and then Cracker twenty seven. Now, I know that might be a hot take, but the way Cracker showed out, like... Over Dofi, though? Yes, and the reason why I say that is just because looking at what... And that was a toss-up for me, but looking at what Gear 4 did to Dofi compared to what Cracker was doing to that nigga Luffy... Yeah, yeah... That's, See, that's kind of where okay. I gave him the edge, but it's, like, I'm, like, right here with I really don't know. Okay. I respect that. If we are being fair, matchup did play a factor. It did. It that. did, for sure. But the only reason why I'm not just going to outright call it blasphemous is just because I do respect you having Cracker in such high regards. I do think Cracker is Big Mom's true second commander. No shots to Smoothie. So... I respect the placement. It's just over Dofi's tough, but at the same time, I love the respect. Originally, I had Dofi higher, but I was thinking about, like, I don't know. Like, the matchup did play a factor, but the way that nigga showed out, like, I wish we got to see, like, a different fight from Cracker just because of how much of that matchup played a factor. Like, it was literally, like, a mismatch ability-wise for Luffy. So I, I wish we yeah. got to see, see a fight from Cracker that wasn't a mismatch. Yeah, put him against a tank. Yeah. Shit. I respect that. I respect that. Shit. At 26, this is where we get into the first commanders. But just to backtrack, 
I actually do think Sanji's a first commander level nigga, but I think he's bottom of the barrel. Like, that's why I have him at 27. I feel like he's the barrel. Like, you have to be stronger than Sanji to be a first commander. Yeah. Or at least that yeah. strong. I agree with that. So, just off of that, I think the next bottom of that barrel is Shiru at 26. Then I got Magellan at 25. And I got King at 24. And I got Rob Gucci at 23. Now, mm. these next four was tough for me. I mean, Shiru, not really. I think he's the weakest person in the first commander room, aside from Sanji. But Magellan, I'm only giving him that spot out of respect for the position he holds. That's the only reason why I really included him. And I can't really put him any higher than that. But as far as King goes, King is that nigga. And even though Zoro deleted him, he's still a first commander. Like... That was a mid-diff, and I feel like most niggas just aren't capable of finding out his ability. And when you want to talk about the people in that room, I feel like he should be able to beat Shiru. Maybe. We haven't seen shit. Yeah, at and least for I, now, like, I think that's a pretty safe assumption. Yeah. And then as far as Rob Gucci, I mean, we all saw what we saw. I respect it. But just like with some other niggas on this list, I'm not going to outright glaze because we say it often and I'll say it again. First commanders are the real top tiers in One Piece. It's just top tiers are monsters. So if you're going to just, you can't just, I think a lot of people take titles lightly just because titles are labels. But when you strip away the titles and labels, strip away the jersey and look at the player, look at the niggas who hold the title, like, that's not an easy room to get in. So, I'm not going to just outright gas niggas. So, as far as Gucci goes, I have him at 23. Okay. See, I didn't include Rob Lucci because I just forgot about that nigga. I'm not going to lie to you. But, that sounds pretty right for where he would be at. But, and I didn't include Magellan either. Me, personally, like, I don't think Magellan is truly as broken as he looked in impel down like yeah. in terms of like if you were to fight in a different location his build his ability is broken as fuck don't get me wrong but i don't know i feel like the surroundings and the super tight spaces played a large factor in that along with the fact that there was no top tier characters really in honestly there. honestly I, i'm kind of gassing the shit out of him no pun intended with him like i think He's a first. I think he only holds that tier when you're fighting him indoors. If you're if fighting him in Impel Down, then that placement is accurate. Yeah, literally. Like, if we're taking him out of Impel Down, I would remove him from the list, bump everyone else up one spot, and put Cracker at 30. Okay. Shit, well, my 26, I put Sanji. 25, I put Shiryu. Okay. 24, I put King. Okay. And 23, I put Katakuri. Ooh. Oh, really? Yeah. And I think, like, me personally, King rocked the fuck out. So did Katakuri. That's really like a, that's a, like a super toss-up. Um, I don't really Honest- know, like... I, like, I'm very curious what that fight would look like if they actually were to, like, fight, fight the ones type shit. Ooh, King and Katakuri? Yeah. Like, Honestly, I'm right there with you, especially just because you didn't include Gucci. Like, Katakuri is literally next up on my list. So I literally, it seems we have the same first commander room order for the most part so far. Yeah. If I included I Rob Lucci, I'd probably put him in the same spot. Yeah, okay. Well, just off that... I got Katakuri at 22, Marco, ooh, wow. I got Marco at 21, Yamato at 20, and Rayleigh at 19. Now, Ooh. I'm not going to lie. A lot of people are going to watch this video and probably slam their phone because they all glaze Rayleigh. But even if this was prime Rayleigh, I wouldn't put him in top tier. 
I would put him, I think he would be the same. If he was top tier, he'd be what Sanji is to the first commander tier, in my opinion. Just bottom of the barrel. So, I really don't think he's in that room. And if he is, that's what he is. But he's out of his prime. So, he's still him. I still think he could be any of the first commanders. That being said, it would be an amazing fight. But as far as the others go, I mean, Katakuri, he is him. And I think Katakuri, of all the other first commander level niggas we've seen, aside from Marco, he's been the most impressive just by far. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And as far as Marco goes, just like I said, he's been more impressive than Katakuri. I mean, he fought two commanders, two on one. He fought an admiral. He fought a Yonko. This man's done it all, and he's the right hand to Whitebeard. I mean, I just had to put him at 21. And then as far as Yamato goes, hmm. Yamato was tricky for me, but everything that she did in Wano made it easy for me to put her at 21 over all the other first commanders, let alone her devil fruit is extremely broken the mythological uh zone fruit let alone she has advanced all three hockeys which i'm not sure any of the other first commanders that i already named does so pretty sure they don't just kind of offer that yeah like she's literally baby kaido just not a top tier so just off of that hell you could say she's the kaido of the first commanders just because i don't think kaido's top of the first or the top tiers he's like middle of the pack Mm, okay. But Yamato is middle of the first commander room just based off the other niggas to come. But I would have to say Yamato 20. And then again, I feel like at least everyone there, I think Rayleigh has their number. And I think Yamato is damn near just that strong as Rayleigh, but I think experience plays the huge factor there. Yeah, yeah. Shit, my my twenty two, um, my twenty two. I put Marco. Twenty one. I put Yamato. Twenty. I put shit. Uh, twenty. I put Rayleigh, and nineteen. I put Ben Beckman. Ooh, Benny boy. Yes, sir. Now, bro, what the fuck? We have the same list. I have Ben Beckman as my next uh, spot at 18. <laughs> like, if I literally included Rob Lucci, we'd have the same, like, basic list. Basically. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie. For 22, Marco, I mean, the brother balls out every arc he's in. Like, yeah, especially I'm... when you want to look at Wano, like, that nigga was spanking King and Queen. Now, obviously, if it's a two-on-one with characters of that caliber, a nigga going to get tired. Like, that's just inevitable. But... The fact that he was literally running that fade by himself is crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Let alone in the driver's seat. Yeah, exactly. Like, now, I put Yamato at 21. Yamato also rocked the fuck out, and I feel like she definitely deserves a spot somewhere high. Like, I mean, all three types of hockey, we already see how broken that is, like. Every character who yeah. has, like, especially when you want to look at advanced conquerors, like every character who has it is fucking busted. So it's like she gotta be higher than everyone else that we name. They just don't have that shit. Like we we know how broken advanced conquerors is. Even if they it's others have, difference. yeah, exactly. Even if the others have advanced I, observation and advanced uh, armament, that advanced conquerors makes such a huge difference. Like I think. Zoro versus King, the same way how one seed figured him out, it was really a mid diff. The same way how that was the difference, I think that's damn near really a high diff, but I think that's pretty much the difference between the rest of the first commander level niggas who have all three advanced hockey rather than just advanced observation and armament. Because, like you said, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um,. You know, Rayleigh, that nigga, I feel like niggas gas the shit out of him. And rightfully so, like, knowing who yeah. he is. But 
if we're looking current One Piece, this is not prime really we're talking about. The nigga's old as shit. And yes, experience comes with a lot. And it's not like his hockey is just ass or anything. But he is old as dirt. Like, there's only so much yeah. a nigga can do at that. Like, we know age in One Piece, 40's not old. But Rayleigh's older than that. Like, mm. that nigga Rayleigh is old as shit. Like, he's actually old when you when you talk One Piece as well. Not he's just part of the legendary old trio of him, Garp, and Sengoku. Mm-hmm. And, hey, the fact that he's that high on both of our lists speaks volumes. Because I don't know about you, but... Sengoku's not on my list. Yeah. He's not on my list. <laughs> Shit. Well, just to keep going, at 18, I mean, like you said, Ben Beckman. That nigga, I got Ben Beckman. Uh, 17, I got Kid. 16, I got Law. And 15, I got Zoro. Now, those four... I feel like those four are just in a, like, I feel like those four are damn near interchangeable. Like, I could really go either way between the four of them. Mm. I feel like Ben Beckman, like, I feel like the Nova trio, aside from Luffy, between Law, Kid, and Zoro, I feel like they just got to be stronger than every first commander, and that means every first commander. But... We know what we know about Ben Beckman, and it's safe to assume he's the strongest first commander level nigga, even stronger than old Rayleigh. So, like how you, you had him, I'd have him at 18. As far as 17 goes, I am, could really go either way between Kid and Law, and on a good day, I'm saying Kid is stronger, but Law has been more impressive throughout the story, anime and manga-wise, to the point where it's like, it's hard to call them equal when you look at everything that you see, even though we know they are. So, just accepting reality, I have a kid at 17. And Law, saucy nigga himself, 16. I think Zoro is tough. I'm a little bit biased, but even without it, I think his ceiling is higher, and I think his floor is just a little bit higher, too. Even though Law and Kid took down Big Mom, I feel like if you take Kid out of that fight and put Zoro in there, it's the same results. Hell yeah. I agree with that 100%. Shit. Uh, my 18, I got Kid. 17, I got Law. 16, I have Zoro. Now, 15, I, don't really, I ain't really know where to put this nigga because I don't really know exactly what happened but at 15 i got sabo now Ooh. i don't know exactly what happened at the reverie like i don't know the exact details and shit i just they know niggas was boxing and they got out of there all right so i'll say because they kind of went over it from what we know he didn't like it's nothing too crazy aside from like like, we don't know much from a boxing standpoint. So, okay. it's safe to assume it's taken from how you think how strong he is. Okay. Tell shit. Flame Emperor. Yeah, and then just looking at that, like, the title he holds now, like, the nigga gotta be that strong. Where'd you have him? 16. Okay. I respect that. I Heard. respect that. You no, I had him at, uh, I had him at 15. You're going to see where I put them. Like, I'm really high on the Sabo stocks, and I'll get into why. But I really respect them at 15. Okay, shit. Well, 14, I think this is where we get into the top tier territory. I think Zoro right now is the bottom of the barrel. No, not even bottom. I think Zoro's at the door for the top tier, the closest one to the door, with Kid and Law, like, right there with him. But I don't think they're on that exact timing. When you want to look at the top tiers, the real monsters, I think this is where the big 14 stand tall, especially when we're going to talk about current. So just off of that, at 14, I got Green Bull. At 13, I got Garp. At 12, I got Fujitora. And at 11, I got Aokiji. 
You know, we have damn near the same ones, except instead of Aokiji, I put Big Mom. Wow. And Aokiji's literally one spot higher than Big Mom. <laughs> I got Sabo at 10 and then Big Mom right for above him. Like, yeah. Whoa, whoa. I just parsed that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to spin. We're going to spin back to that. We're going to spin back to that. At 14, I got Green Bull. Green Bull was kind of impressive in Wayno. He dogged out King and Queen, tired or not. That's still two commanders, but that's his job. He's an admiral. Other than that, he got bitched by Shanks and didn't really do nothing else. So I can't really say he's anything crazy, but he's an admiral, so he's top tier by default. I think he's this gen's cheeky, if you will, just bottom of the barrel, top tier. When you want to look at that next spot, Garp, he still got it. Ooh, I feel like at the end of the day, he's still an old man. And everyone else in this list should be able to beat him by default. But Green Bull's not that impressive. So I have Garp at 13. Fujitora. I'm not that I look, I'm an admiral guy. Not over Yonko. I like both. But at the end of the day, I think the new admirals are just the weaker top tier members. But again, I feel like the gaps in One Piece, the gaps in first commanders are like this big. The gaps in for top tiers are damn near non existent. Yeah, hundred percent. But at twelve I got Fuji Tora and at eleven I got Aokiji. I feel like Aokiji is the weakest out of the uh, OG3 Admirals, and he's definitely the craziest, but at the same time, I can't really say that when Akainu exists. He's by default the strongest, and Kizaru's a broken motherfucker. I feel like Aokiji makes his place for me at 11. Mm. See, the 14 through uh, 12 are exactly the same for me. Like, Green Bull at 14... He didn't, like, I mean, he's he literally just got his introduction. Like, he didn't really do much of anything. So, it's like, it's kind of hard to put him above anybody right now. Let alone, yeah, his exactly. ability seems pretty broken, but I want to see it against somebody that's really up there. You know what I mean? Before I 100%. decide to put him above anybody that's really up there. No, nah, yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. 13, I had Garp. And that's just off of what I heard through the grapevine, because I don't even know. <laughs> but Big Garp still be throwing them bitches, apparently. So I put Garp at 13. He uh, do, bro. 12, I had Fujitora. Like, Dang. I put Fujitora at 12 just because Garp is not in his prime and shit. So yeah. I feel like it would be kind of crazy if he could still beat Fujitora, knowing Fujitora is a new admiral 100%. now. No, I'm right there with you. Yeah, like, that'd be kind of crazy. Fujitora was impressive. I feel like a lot of people sleep on Fujitora. Like, we have them low, but we do not sleep on Fujitora over here. Yeah, 100%. And then 11, I put Big Mom. I mean, yeah, 11, I put Big Mom. Um, Big Mom just showed the absolute fuck off like she just went crazy i'm not gonna lie like yeah whole cake made her stocks drop but she brought that shit back up times 20 like, like i feel like i feel like when you want to talk power scaling in one piece there are some characters that are package deals like the same way how law and kid by default have to be as like near each other really back and forth but at the end of the day i'm gonna say near each other and zoro too but especially Law and Kid, you could say Big Mom kind of showed, the way she showed out in Wayno, she deserves to be, if not back-to-back -back with Kaido, close to him. Yeah. The same way how Aokiji deserves to be close to Kizaru and Akainu. But, I mean, there's a lot of different... We're going to keep saying this a lot. Yeah, like, at the end of the day... They, they're they close in strength, but that doesn't mean there's not a couple people in between them. You know what I'm saying? Like, that just, yeah. that just shows how close that top tier really is to each other. Literally. Literally. Shit. Well, mm, that top I'm 10. not going to... 
She. This is where it gets crazy. It gets wicked. And I'm not going to lie. It feels weird keeping Aokiji out of my top 10. Just because he is one of the OG3 admirals. And I definitely... I don't think he got weaker after his fight with Akinu. Even though he lost the leg. Like, he's still him. He's still an admiral. Like, or was. So, just off of that, he's out of the top 10. But the top 10 is the top 10 still. And again, there's not that really any real gaps in the top tiers. That being said, though, at number 10, I got Salbo, Flame Emperor himself. At 9, I got Big Mom. At 8, I got Blackbeard. And at 7, I got Mihawk. Now, Ooh. I'm not going to lie. 10 with Sabo is tricky. He didn't do really much of anything at the Rebel. But for me, it's the fact that they all made it out. And at the same time, he's dubbed the Flame Emperor. But I really think he's the Flame Admiral. No pun intended. Like, when you actually look at that nigga, really analyze his ability. He was a first commander level nigga before he got the fruit. Ace was a second commander level nigga just off the fruit alone with basic hockey. Sabo had advanced armament and probably safe to assume advanced observation in Dressrosa before he got it. Let alone now he has a really broken devil fruit. A broken Logia at that, just like the other most of the admirals. And safe to assume he doesn't have advanced conquerors or conquerors in general like the admirals. I think he's literally another admiral. Like, I think getting the mirror mirror no me fruit, it didn't just make him a uh, strongest first commander level nigga. I think it put him in that tier. Mm. That's mm. very interesting. Let us know in the comments what you think about that. Yeah, let us know. Let us know. I think he's the fifth admiral or the flame admiral, if you will, rather than the fifth or flame emperor. But as far as the rest go, Big Mom at nine, like you said, her stock's raised after Wayno. And like I said, I think she just by default deserves to be close to Kaido. It's just hard because there's a lot of niggas that deserve to be close to Kaido. Like, number eight. For me, it's weird having Blackbeard so low, let alone lower than Luffy, just because he's the final villain. But he's a fat nigga. Like, (laughs) I know he has... I know he has two different broken-ass devil fruits, and... Most likely, not even most likely, he has all three Conqueror's Hockey by default. Or all three Advanced uh, Hockey's by default. So does everyone else in this list. Like, the Broken Devil Fruit is crazy, but everyone else has crazy shit going for them. Like, I gotta see some real crazy shit from Blackbeard before I can put him over anyone else. Because there's everyone in here deserves to be, like... From here on, I think speculation alone, unless you're literally Dragon or Kizaru, I think speculation alone just isn't enough. Mm. Okay. Maybe. And I feel like Seven, Mihawk, finally an Emperor. I mean, Cross Guild exists, but we all know it only exists because Mihawk's there. And it's really smart on Oda's pants because he's always been an Emperor. It's just now... Niggas can give him that respect that he deserves power scaling wise. But looking at him, the same way how Big Mom has to be close to Kaido, Mihawk by default has to be really back to back with Shanks, if not stronger. I just thought I will happen to say, like, like you said, there's a lot of people in between. You can say the same thing. But that being said, I think Mihawk is crazy. And truth be told, I think from Mihawk all the way to Aokiji, I could say is interchangeable. Like, I really think Aokiji and Mihawk would be the most extreme, like, 51-48 type of fight. So that tells you about everyone else in between. Okay. Now, when I made my list, I forgot to change some shit because I had asked the question before we made it, like, or while I was making it, are we including, like, the Gorosei and those niggas? So, off of speculation, I put uh, Emu 1. So, 
my list is going to be kind of like different if I were to take him out of the list. I forgot to take him out and put someone else. So let's just say for uh, for reference sake, I take that nigga off the list and my two becomes one and so on and so forth. And okay. then I'll throw Rob Lucci in the list somewhere in the All 20s. Right. Let's just say that just going forward so it's not confusing as shit. So for that being said, my 10 is now Big Mom. At nine, I have Aokiji. At eight, I have Kaido. At seven, I have Mihawk. Okay. Okay. Now, Ooh. 10 being Big Mom, I mean, we just talked about her. She, she fucking, like, when you want to talk raise the stocks, it doesn't get much, like, insane than that. I mean, she raised yeah, it like yeah. shit. Especially, like... She did. That whole cake showing was so bad for her to the point where the community gave up on her as a character. Like, it was bad. It was really bad. Yeah, like... I'm not gonna lie. Before, Wayno, if you said that Big Mom versus Shanks is an extreme diff fight, I would have only respected it just off title. But I wouldn't have thought it would have been that close. Hell leaving yeah. Hulk, leaving Wayno, like... She got that shit. Mm-hmm. She got that She Like, oh, man. Absolute brute. Nine, I put Aokiji. Now, I could go either way between the two. I just put Aokiji just because, like, I feel like his power is a little better. I feel like that's the only, like, that's kind of the only reason why I put her put him higher than Big Mom. I could go either yeah. way, though. Like, I, it, yeah, it's, it, it's right here. Like, pick your poison with that one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Eight, I put Kaido, which sounds fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but like when you hear the rest of the list you'll understand like nah for me Kaido's not even that much higher yeah like you 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 like, see you'll it's see. the top tier it's the top tier yeah like everybody's literally everybody's like this you could juggle them like from 14 you could really from Fuji Tour to where we are now you could say it's you know what i mean yeah and then seven, Big Mihawk, you know what I'm saying? I agree with that. Like, he got to be right fucking there, if not stronger than Shanks. He got to yeah, be at yeah. least right there. At least right there. At least. Like, and you could say the exact same thing with Big Mom and Kaido. You could say the exact same thing with um, with Aokiji and Kizuru and Akinu. Especially Akinu and Aokiji. But... Mihawk 100% has to be right there at 7, if not, like, close. Yeah. But just to keep going, who You want to, let's just do 6 to 4. All right. At 6, I got Kizaru. At 5, I got Kaido. And at 4, I got Luffy. Now, this one was hard for me because... Even though I have Kizaru at six, if you were to ask me one on one, I'm betting on Kizaru against anyone in the verse just because of how broken he is. But at the same time, we also saw what we saw in the manga, which can't go crazy. But at the same time, he is probably the most broken nigga in One Piece just off his devil fruit. Yeah, and you want to oh, talk yeah. about. He's, like but by default, by the fault, he has the best devil fruit. Like it's not even a it's not even a toss up. It's not a comparison. Nothing like that is the best devil fruit in One Piece. It is hundred percent. Like if Kizaru had the mindset of anyone else in the top tier, I'd probably keep him in the top three. But just because of that, I have him at six. At five, I have Kaido. I would put Kaido higher. Like, I really could put Kaido higher, but Luffy has to be stronger than him by default. Mm -hmm. And everyone else that I haven't named, a really amazing case could be made for why they're just stronger by default. Like, but Kaido, like, he really, just like Mihawk, he kind of just has to, like, he can't be too low. Like, I respect him at eight, and I feel like I just had to put him at five. And at four, I got big Luffy himself. Like, that nigga is a dog. That nigga is a dog. And I mean, everyone mastered all three, but his hockey's different. Like, yeah. that shit is strong. Like, he ain't top three yet. But at the same time, there's really not much room for that nigga to grow. And I think if he ran the one on one against anyone in the verse, 
nine out of there's a fifty fifty chance he's probably winning, if not tying. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like. Luffy is really him now. Like when you want to talk about one v one against the nigga, like yeah, he can literally do anything. Like that shit is so. Like if you wanted to compare any Devil Fruit to Kizaru's, it'd be Luffy's. When you want to talk about which is more broken. Yeah, hundred percent. It's yeah, low key, low key. It's literally a toss up there. Yeah, but my six, I also have Kizaru. At five, okay. I have Luffy, and four, I put Blackbeard. Now, Blackbeard, Ooh, Black I don't Black actually Black. think Blackbeard is stronger than Luffy right now. But, he, like, he, he, like, it, I don't think it would make sense for them to go into that fight and him not be stronger than Luffy, at least going into and it. And that's the same thing for me. Like, it doesn't make. That's why Luffy's under Akainu for me. Like, I feel like it doesn't make sense for him to be stronger than Akainu yet. Same with Shanks. Like, just because they haven't met yet, I'm just going to assume he's probably not stronger than him yet. And Dragon, like, safe to assume he's just that nigga by default. Yeah. But as far as Blackbeard goes, like, that's literally my thinking process with Blackbeard and Luffy. The only reason why I didn't put him over him is just because... It's hard for me to put Blackbeard over everyone else. Yeah, it's like I like when I look at Blackbeard, the brother is broken. Do not get me wrong, but mm-hmm. when I'm looking at these other characters that are up here, it's hard for me to put him above them. Like it's just like off of who he is and what he's been doing and all of that type of shit. Like and the fact that he has to be stronger than Luffy for shit to make sense. Like, I had to, but I don't yeah, like it. Yeah, I respect I don't, it. I don't like nah, it, but like, I have had to. I re- I'm glad you did, just because I didn't. Like, I really respect that. But I got Blackbeard there for it. And Big Luffy starts off the top five. Okay, well then, for my top three, it's probably going to be close or similar to yours. Like, just by default. Like, I'm curious. You, I, I'm pretty sure I know who you have at one. We probably have the same one. Yeah, it's really just a coin toss between two and three. But between the red dog and the red hair, nigga, for my two and three. For me, this is very close. But I feel like as Fleet Admiral, Aki Inu... It would be a problem if anyone could walk in there and beat him in a 1v1. Like, that's why I feel like he's the strongest, right? And he actually beat a top-tier character in a 1v1, which no one else has done yet. So, just off of that, I have Akinu at 2. I have Shanks at 3. Like, Shanks, God of Hockey himself, no Devil Fruit, big him. Like, the only reason he's not higher is because of what I said about Akinu. That's why I have him at 3. But I could, like, accept him being over him because I could really go either way there. And then at one, just by default, I got Dragon. Purely off speculation, but I feel like Sabo just now became a top tier. Beforehand, somebody had to be carrying the weight because we've seen the roster for the Revel, and it's safe to assume Kuma was probably the second strongest, maybe. So it's like, not including Sabo. So it's like... Just off of that, unless you want to say that bird nigga carousel, but Fuck that's even here. off speculate. Yeah, exactly. Like, just off of that, Dragon has to be the strongest. Like, especially just because when you look at who he's facing, it's the world government versus the Revel. And the Revel raised enough clout and awareness to for them to, like, be a real threat to the point where it's more of a threat than the Yonkos. Dragon's the most wanted man. Like, I feel like he's also the strongest man when you want to talk about current alive niggas. Yeah, you know, we have the exact same top three. Um, I, I put Shanks at three. Like, I feel like you're just, like, I don't know why you wouldn't have Shanks that high off of yeah. just his portrayal at this point. Like, I don't, at this point, I don't know how you don't this, have him that high. This, bro, that's Oda's favorite. Like, Shanks is Oda's favorite character. I mean, look what he just did to Green Bull. Look what the, look what this nigga just did to an admiral. 
Bro, look what he did in film Red, and even just in general, like everything he always look what he, does. In Marie, like, like bro, like this nigga be going crazy now. Niggas gonna look at that Marine Ford scene and say, "How can you say Akinu stronger than Shanks?" <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> nah, but for real, like I think Akinu has to be two because, similar to what you said, like in the sense of no one can, you can't have someone that could just walk in and just whoop that nigga in a one or not whoop, but beat that nigga in a one v one. Yeah, hundred percent. That being said, I can't put Dragon him at man. one because a dragon. Like, if Dragon isn't the strongest, they would have been gone a a long time ago. Like, they would have been gone a long time ago if it wasn't for Dragon. Like, I feel Mm. like he has to be one just because of that. Like, the Rebel's not a thing if Dragon's not the strongest. Hundred, hundred. I'm right. See, you already know because our list is damn near identical, but, nigga, I'm right there with you. (laughs) Like... Like, them niggas would be beyond fuck. Like, like that's literally the only reason they haven't been caught yet is because Dragon is alive. Like, they don't even be fighting for real. They don't, like, Akinu do doesn't head? pull up and, and fight Dragon. That just, that doesn't happen because they know if they pull up and fight Dragon, somebody getting smoked. The world government's like the 2016 Warriors, whereas the Revolutionary Army is like the Warriors, is like the Cavs that actually won it. Like yeah, exactly. It's like Bombron is dragon. I think Salvo's big Kyrie now, and then everyone else is just the rest. The role player, Jr. Smith, and now. Mm, if anything, Kuma is Kevin Love. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> nah, but hey, man, that's our top thirty current strongest One Piece characters. You know what I'm saying? I have oh, to yeah, keep stressing oh, yeah. the current because niggas gonna be like, "Where's Odin? Where's Roger?" Where's Whitebeard? No, nigga. This is current One Piece top 30 strongest characters. Let us know what you thought about our list. You know what I'm saying? Who hell would you yeah, change? Hell yeah. What order would you change? Are we tweaking? Hell yeah. Vice, vice versa. Who are, are we tweaking with some of our selections? Let us know. Like you said, let us know. Or vice versa. Is there someone that we are just missing? I don't think there is. Yeah, I don't think there is either. Let us know if there's someone we're sleeping on. But yeah, hundred percent. Hey man, with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button for us. We really appreciate it. Make sure you hit the big red subscribe button as well, and turn on that post yeah, notification yeah. bell so you don't miss any of our other special videos. You know what I'm saying? With that being said, make sure you guys click the description as well. Two links will be waiting for you. One will take you to all of our socials, Sons of Tokyo, on every platform. The other one will take you to our Discord. Make sure you guys join Come that. On Come on in. Come on in. You know what I'm saying? Join that. Come chop it up with us. You feel me? But uh, yeah, man. With that being said, S-O-T out.